coming up on today's Keys News. The Manchester Velodrome plays host to a cycling world record event. The first ever cereal cafe opens in Manchester. And we go along to the coolest place to open in the region this year. Welcome to Keys News. First, today let's take a look at the top stories around Greater Manchester. A teenager has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder after a shooting in Moss Side yesterday. Emergency crews were called to Great Western Street or early Monday lunchtime to reports that shots had been fired. A 23-year-old man has been taken to Manchester Royal Infirmary for treatment. His injuries are not believed to be life-threatening. Five billion pounds worth of outsourcing for council services are to be announced today. Deals are being finalised with private contractors set to deliver multiple services in Trafford, including parks, bins, street cleaning and street lighting. Trafford have led the way, carrying a one-year-long procurement process. The move could eventually expand to the whole of Greater Manchester. Police are trying to establish whether a huge fire at a recycling depot in Salford was arson. Fire crews put out small remaining pockets of fire to give investigators full access to the site of Rake Lane, Clifton. Forty fighters were needed to tackle the blaze at its height. A bloom of black smoke, smoke could be seen for several miles at the height of the blaze and explosions were also heard. Manchester's first cereal cafe has opened its doors to the public. Jess Jepson has been down to take a look. Milk Cereal Dive, Manchester's first ever cereal cafe, has opened its doors just weeks after London Cereal Killer Cafe arrived. Yes, that's right, a cafe dedicated entirely to cereal. The small cereal cafe has opened in Affleck's Palace and is already a great success, offering a variety of cereals, toppings and flavours of milk. I think this kind of business is fresh for Manchester, so Affleck's the perfect place to do something fresh and new because it's not just trying to get people off the street in, like, into your shop, that's new, completely new, that people don't really understand. Whereas Affleck's, you've got that walk for anywhere already. You've got the kind of people who would be interested in, in a cereal bar, something completely different because it's not your normal coffee shop. So I think it's the perfect place to start a business like it's, it's amazing how many different kinds of cereals there is like I mean even you could have these simple cereals like Special K there's like 20 to 30 different kinds of Special K which is like crazy so the American ones have been also very very difficult and also are very very expensive to source as well so but, but yeah apart from that really it's, it's fun more to start off with because we, we end up with about 400 different types of cereal in, in, our, in our shopping basket and then obviously cut it down to, to like 70 cereals absolutely I mean, like, it's such a fun concept isn't it and like everybody who goes in, they like live in too as well. And like, we've had like a lot of like property cereal enthusiasts and so on. And like everyone just like relives their childhood. We asked the public what they thought of the idea. I think it's a dead good concept and I really enjoyed it. It's a really good idea because it's uh, something different. Jess Jepson, Keys TV News. Manchester Velodrome played host to a world record attempt this week. Toby Crane went out to find out more. Since the UCI unified the hour record in 2014, there have so far been three successful attempts. Jens Voigt set the benchmark of 51.1 kilometres. The current record of 52.49 kilometres is held by Australian Rohan Dennis. And now, here at the National Cycling Centre in Manchester, Gustav Larsson, 34-year-old from Sweden, hopes to break that record once more. The Swedes' attempt was hosted by the Revolution Series. Before the event, he seemed quietly confident. I mean, I'm aiming to just to beat Dennis. That's that, uh, that's the main goal to actually beat the record. Though the road time trial specialist started well, his lack of experience on the track showed early. By the 25 minute mark, he was already nearly a minute off the pace. Undeterred, Larsson battled through the longest hour with the support of the crowd and aimed for the Swedish national record of 45.3 kilometres instead. 
So sadly for Gustav Larsson, today was not to be his day. He has completely annihilated the Swedish record. We're just waiting on confirmation of what his actual time is, but it's clear he has not broken the world's today. With a final distance of 50.016 kilometres, he may not have broken any world records today, but the Swedes promised that he will be back to try it again. Toby Crine, Keys News. We'd just like to make an apology for the technical errors that we may have experienced during that piece. Now, Penny James has joined us in the studio to have a look at today's papers. Penny, we're going to start off with uh, The Guardian, who I believe have got something quite interesting to say about the Tories, haven't they? Yes, yes, the Tories have made a brand new election promise, quite a big one. So the inheritance tax is a big thing associated with the Tories. They're now saying they're going to cut all inheritance tax for properties worth £1 million and less, and they want to decrease the amount of inheritance tax for properties worth between £1 million and £2 million. So they're really aiming that at sort of middle class southerners. Uh, so that, that'll be a big general election promise for them, something that's hopefully going to win them some more votes. Um, so yeah, that's part of their general election campaign. They're also coming out with the budget tomorrow. So uh, mm. we'll see what they have to say there. And now the independent uh, to reduce waiting times instead of patients are advised instead of seeing their doctor, the pharmacist, is that right? Yes, yes, the Royal College of General Practice and the Royal uh, Pharmaceutical Society have suggested that pharmacists now take a little bit of extra training and actually sit in your GP practice and see patients. Uh, so they won't be seeing uh, serious problems, they'll mostly be doing sort of things like repeat prescriptions, so people who have things like high blood pressure and asthma, so they won't be dealing with serious things, but it's meant to cut waiting times since uh, there's been uh, more GPs retiring and sort of less younger GPs coming into the profession. Yeah, because we're always hearing about those waiting times, aren't they're we, awful. how they're being a burden yeah. on everybody, so <laughs> yeah. glad to hear that that is trying to be sorted out. Yeah. Also, uh, the Daily Mail as well, they've got something quite interesting to say this uh, afternoon, haven't they? Yes. What tell us about them? Yes, so this is the big uh, sex scandal, um, a alleged paedophile ring that was uh, involving high-profile members of the police and Parliament. Um, Scotland Yard are being accused of covering up uh, 14 cases of child abuse involving VIPs. Uh, BBC Newsnight have also been told that the police stopped their undercover surveillance of uh, ex MP. Cyril Smith, who was the MP for Rochdale, uh, after he was accused of uh, child abuse. Yeah. And now um, the woman shockingly died out of nowhere on the street. Tell us about this. Yes, yeah, this is in the Metro. This is a really tragic story. So mum of two, Alison Wilson, uh, from uh, from Widnes, uh, tried to split up an argument in the street involving a couple and a baby and uh, very tragically resulted in her death. Um, the woman, the baby and her partner and herself were all taken to hospital and she sadly passed away six days later. Okay. Well, thanks very much for joining us in the studio, Penny. Thank you. Now we move on to the latest sport across Greater Manchester with Joey Payne. Good afternoon. It was another crucial weekend in Manchester's non-league football scene. In the conference, Altrincham slipped to a disappointing 4-1 defeat at home to Wrexham. In the conference north, Hyde battled their way to a good point, drawing 1-1 with Harrogate. In the Northern Premier, FC United strengthened their position at the top with a 1-0 win at Hales-Owen. And in the First Division North, Salford took a massive step towards winning the Air League, winning 3-0 away to New Mills. With results going their way elsewhere, they remain top of the table. And in Rugby League, the Salford Red Devils made it three games unbeaten as they beat Wakefield 24-18 at the AJ Bell Stadium. That's all from me. Join us on Thursday for more of your local sport. Now, if you're popping into Manchester City Centre over the next couple of days, there is an interesting new bar opening in Spinning Fields. Andy Riley went to have a closer look at the coolest place to open in Manchester this year. Spinning Fields, Manchester, home to the city's very first ice bar. So, once you've uh, been outside and you've managed to get yourself your wristband and you've put exactly how much you want on there, then you come into this lovely warm area for half an hour or so where they have some really quite tasty fruit-based cocktails. Before you head into the main ice bar, let's go in and see the ice itself. Well, 
well this is a bit different it's uh, this is fantastic really really nice very cold all we need is Jean-Claude Van Damme himself to turn up we're gonna have rudimental on the decks James, so the uh, technical side of this ice bar, how do you actually turn a room like that into basically a huge giant block of ice? Uh, a lot of hard work basically, so we've had a team of 14 plus on site for five days, working very long hours, technically in essence it's a huge freezer that we uh, then put six tonnes of ice into which gets sculpted and we've got four mono blocks working at full power all the time to keep it between minus 20 and minus Minus five. So it's normally minus five when people are coming in. And... Minus five, it fluctuates slightly, but it's always cold enough for you to feel it, definitely. Fantastic, it's a great area for it to, uh, you know, for it to be placed. Um, I think it'd be really receptive for the guys in the area. Well, we've been wanting to come for a long time. We've heard about it on the radio. and We're easy. really excited to see how cold it is. We've heard that there's a, an ice wolf inside that we can sit on. Yeah. So we're really excited about sitting on the wolf so and getting our picture taken. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Uh, it's great in a great location. Springfield's part of the, the, uh, the city. So, yeah, definitely I'll be popping in to have a drink or two. Andy Riley, Keys News, freezing. Now, David Barker is here with us today to give us his review on the second best exotic Marigold Hotel. So, David, tell us what is it all about? So, the second best exotic Marigold Hotel sees that the original hotel has um, fall to capacity pretty much, you know, it's that much of a roaring success. So Dev Battelle, the owner, and his new business partner Maggie Smith look to go and get funds to create a second best Marigold exotic hotel. And um, it's about sort of, uh, there's sort of a lot of different storylines. One of the main ones is Dev Battelle's upcoming marriage to his wife, but it's also his sort of love rival and business rival adds a bit of drama to that. And there's also the storyline between Judy Dench and Bill Nye in a sort of will they, won't they romance. So it's a lot of light sort of fun storylines going on. Now the question is, is the second one better than the first? Because sequels don't always tend to sort of be as good. Um, it's not quite, I mean, they're both sort of quite thin ones. I mean, this one exists because of the popularity of the first one, but that's not to say it doesn't do badly. It's just, I think there's less depth there, but it's still just as entertaining, I think. Okay. And as a general thing, what was your overall opinion on the film? Um, I, I sort of quite enjoy it. It's paper thin, um, you know, it's no depth here. But, you know, that's not to say it isn't enjoyment. I mean, all the cast are great. It's a great location. Everyone's just having fun, and that's really quite infectious. And it is really funny, especially Maggie Smith. She steals the sort of, sort of a dour sort of pessimism, but she's playing it right, and it's just jolly good fun. And what was the acting like? I mean, it's all, like, the best of sort of British, or, um, of the older generation, you know. That's what was sort of the appeal of the first one and why it did so successful, because it's older actors, and it relates to a lot of audience that's perhaps marginalised. But that's not to say... It's not for everyone, because I think it's a wildly broad appealing film. Oh, well, I'm definitely going to be able to see it. Thanks very much. Thanks, David, for your time. So let's find out what the weather will be doing with Kate Troy as we take a look at the forecast. It's a grey and drizzly start to the week, unfortunately, but there is still room for a little bit of sunshine as we move further on into today. The cloudy theme continues moving into tomorrow, where it's dry with sunny spells and overnight lows of around 4 or 5 degrees. Thursday is looking even better than that, though, with a bright start, occasionally the odd spot drizzle here and there, but a genuinely positive start to an early weekend. Now we have some sad but breaking news to bring you this lunchtime. A man has fallen to his death from the roof of a shopping centre car park. The death at the Rock Shopping Centre in Bury is not being treated as suspicious, but police, although an investigation to determine the full circumstances, is now underway. 
That's all we have time for today. Head over to our website, keysnews.net, for all the latest breaking news and sport from us. Join in the conversation on Twitter at Keys News or on Facebook. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Bye-bye.